you like music? Do you listen to music, um, you know, as you're driving one place to another or got it on in the background at home or whatnot? Or are you the type of person who, like, really loves music? Who's got collections of their favorite artists and they, they follow them and maybe even go to live concerts if they can? How much do you like music? What kind of music do you like? Now, in our study of the Bible, as it relates to our faith, music is also important. Music is a, is a way that we can express things and feel things that we can't in uh, just our normal speech or normal writing. And as such, music also forms an a important part in our worship of God and also in our own devotional life. Just as there's always been different genres and styles of music, so there's always been, at the same time, religious music that praises God, that uh, cries out to God, that uh, reveals you know, the deepest needs of our hearts before God. Today's lesson focuses on that music, essentially. We're now turning, after reading through many of the histories, that is, the, the story of the early people in, uh, in the covenant with God, we now turn our attention to a new section called the Wisdom Literature. This is the central section of the Old Testament. And this Wisdom section is made up largely of two books. One is called Psalms, and the second is called Proverbs. We're going to look at both of these books today. The first is Psalms. You've probably heard of a psalm before. We uh, read one in or sing one in worship every, every Sunday. And the psalm essentially means uh, instrumental music. And the book of songs is basically a, a book of lyrics to 150 different songs. Now, these, uh, these lyrics are just like the lyrics you find for your, favorite, for your favorite music online. You know, back in the day when people used to buy CDs, which is not that long ago, uh, they used to also come with little booklets, and these booklets would have lyrics, so you could read and follow along everything that's being sung, and if you're, if you're inclined, you could sing along with them. Uh, the Psalms are just like that. They're the lyrics provided to, to songs so that individuals or the entire congregation together can sing these songs. Now, these songs are of a variety of types. Some are, some are praise they're, they're worshipful, they're, they're joyful, they're full of thanksgiving. Some are more uh, sad and somber about difficult circumstances, struggles people are going through, songs of lament. Some are uh, religious or ceremonial. They, they serve a function within a, a specific rite. So there's a variety of, of songs here in the book of Psalms. And if attending worship through the year, you'll, you'll notice there's a variety of, of tone in this music. We're going to be focusing on that in this lesson today. And the uh, last thing I'll say is, before we get into it, is we're focusing on the book of Psalms now because about half of the Psalms that we have were composed or at least attributed to King David. We learned about King David in the last lesson. He was a, a great leader, a great warrior. But he was also a great poet and musician. And roughly half of the psalms that come down to us today were attributed to him. And about a dozen of them uh, talk about events in his life. So it's kind of a natural segue from learning about King David and everything that happened in his life now to the music that he left behind. Uh, the same music that, that filled the worship of the people of Israel uh, you know, a few thousand years ago, and which also guides our own devotional life and music today. Now, we're going to look at a, a couple types of psalms that predominate in the book of Psalms. The first is called uh, Psalms of Praise. And these, these psalms are full of uh, exaltation, of, of good spirit, of uh, thanksgiving and rejoicing. Uh, they're a way of, of giving praise and worship to God. One of the most famous ones in this regard is Psalm 23, which some of you, I would venture, have probably heard before. It goes like this. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. 
He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Ye, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Now prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Now anoint my head with oil, and my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now it's a beautiful, lyrical, simple psalm that recognizes God as our shepherd, who guides us, who leads us, provides for us, and defends us. This is a more more temperate, muted type of song that is uh, easy to just enjoy in a in a simple lyrical fashion, and it's often set to, to set to music. You know, we we read the lyrics here in, in in the book of Psalms, but there's a whole wide range of musical settings now for for this psalm as well as for others. You may this may be familiar to you. How does it go? Uh, the Lord's my shepherd, how not want he makes me down to lie. If that's familiar to you, as we sing it sometime in church, uh, that's, uh, that's just one of the many of options available out there. I'll, I'll, sing, I'll read another one to you now for, that's got a little bit different, uh, more ebullient tone. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear that the earth could change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God will help her right early. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter, he utters his voice, and the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has wrought desolations in the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Now, one of the most natural responses people have to God is to indeed worship and praise him, to, to glorify him for his goodness, and to thank him for all the, the great things that he does for us. You'll Notice that in both of these two psalms, which we've read, there are uh, echoes from the stories we've read to this point. Do any uh, ring in your memory? Are there any features of these psalms that might uh, that remember back to past events in the lives of the people of God? And there's mention here in, in Psalm 46 of uh, the Lord utters his voice. And the earth melts. God, again, uh, speaking and creating or speaking and, and affecting change. There's the, the beautiful image in Psalm 23 of leading by the still waters. It's, uh, it's almost like a, a garden that God guides us to and makes us to lie down in, just as Adam and Eve. The Lord, here again in Psalm 46, <clears throat> destroys the chariots makes wars to cease, overcomes the enemies. Does that sort of remind you a little of Moses leading the people and the God putting to end Pharaoh's armies in the Red Sea? In many of the, the psalms, in the, the music, in the worship life of ancient Israel, they hearkened back to these, these stories that were deep in the, in the consciousness of the people of God and which remained in their consciousness now as Christians who follow Jesus. Now, just as on the radio, you might have your very favorite type of songs, you know, favorite genre, your favorite singer or group. But, you know, the truth is that there's a wide variety of music out there. You know, there's, there's a love songs. There's uh, rock songs that's just 
you know, up energy and, and just rocking along, there's uh, country music. That's about, you know, all sorts of different aspects of life. In the same way, there is a variety of, of music and topics in the book of Psalms. While praise and worship is the most common uh, aspect of people's relationship to God, people also come to God when they're going through a tough time and they're struggling. And uh, the, the Psalms kind of recover the full range of, of human emotion and experience, uh, all the way from joy and thanksgiving, all the way to despair and cries out for help. For instance, there's a, a famous psalm, Psalm 137, that be, reads like this. By the waters of Babylon, there we sat down and wept when we remembered Jerusalem. On the willows there we hung up our instruments, for there our captors required of us songs, and our tormentors mirth, saying, Sing to us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my hand to wither. Let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth, if I do not remember you. If I do not set Jerusalem above my highest joy. This was a psalm that was written when the people were taken captive out of their homeland and moved to a place called Babylon. And this psalm expresses some of their grief and uh, longing there. There's another one that's also very well known, Psalm 142. It reads as such, I cry with my voice to the Lord. With my voice I make supplication to the Lord. I pour out my complaint before him. I tell my trouble before him. When my spirit is faint, thou knowest my way. In the path where I walk, they have hidden a trap for me. I look to the right and watch, but there is none who take notice of me. No refuge remains for me. No man cares for me. I cry to thee, O Lord. I say, Thou art my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Give heed to my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are too strong for me. Bring me out of prison, that I may give thanks to thy name. The righteous will surround me, for thou wilt deal bountifully with me. In these psalms of difficulty and distress, there's often an accompanied plea for the Lord's deliverance or strength or help at this time. And as many faithful people know in prayer, uh, alongside, again, their, their worship and their thanks, are also the pleas of their heart for their assistance in these most difficult of times. The book of Psalms is largely like that, reflecting our human experience in music allowing us to, to sing these out together in our devotional life and then also in church uh, as, as a congregation. So these psalms are a, a way of further connecting us in a different mode to God. Now these psalms, composed over a span of approximately a thousand years, many of them by King David, were important to the worship life of the people of Israel. However, they're still important to our worship life today. And as they appear in our Lutheran worship, they are most frequently sung responsibly. What that means is that the cantor or singing leader will sing the first couple lines, and then the congregation will respond by singing the next couple lines. And this is done in a, a unique way, but it's done in many Christian churches, which use what are called psalm tones. For instance, this coming sun, or Coming up soon, we're going to be singing Psalm 32 in worship. It begins like this. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven and whose sin is put away. Happy are they to whom the Lord imputes no guilt and in whose spirit there is no guile. Now in our worship bulletin, the whole of the psalm will be printed, just as lyrics for any song would be printed if everyone were to sing. But they also include this little mark called a psalm break. And it's a vertical line. There's one in every line, and it indicates when, when in the line the, uh, the music changes its tones. Every psalm as we sing it uses what's called a psalm tone. 
and they're printed actually in page 291 of our green hymnal, and there are 10 psalm tones provided. Psalm tone 1 is probably a tone that you are familiar with. It goes like this. And the psalm break, which we talked about, indicates when we leave the, the beginning tone and shift to the concluding tones. For example, Psalm 32 would be sung like this, beginning with the cantor. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven, and whose sin is put away. And the psalm tones change right where that psalm or that tone break is indicated. The congregation would then respond. Happy are they to whom the Lord imputes no guilt, and in whose spirit there is no guile. In this way, we sing our psalms responsively in worship. It's a little challenging to get the hang of, but once you understand how it flows, all of the psalms uh, work in basically exactly the same way. There is a little variety occasionally when a specialist will come in and, and sing a special setting to the psalms, but typically we sing in this responsive fashion using psalm breaks and psalm tones. Now, if you do like music, you're not alone, because there's a lot of people who enjoy music and find it very powerful. And for that reason, the book of Psalms is probably the most, probably the most popular book in the Bible. We draw from the Psalms all the time. For a couple instances, in our worship service on Sunday morning, when, you, when we're leading worship out of our green hymnal, we in every service that we have uh, out of this, including our regular Sunday services, but also weddings, funerals, baptisms, confirmations, there is always psalms indicated as part of the worship service. Moreover, in our worship that we lead at First Lutheran up in Orland, there's always, not only is there always music in the bullet, in our program, but there's always, oh, well, sorry to see, there's always room for a psalm that's either read or sung responsibly, sometimes in a special musical setting. Furthermore, in people's personal devotions, this is a common devotional that we use at church it's called Portals of Prayer. For every single devotion that's written for every day of the year, there is a scripture passage, uh, usually from the prophets or the gospels, and then always, always there's a psalm that's used. And in addition to our worship and, and daily devotionals, there are some people who devote extraordinary amounts of their life to prayer. People who commit themselves to life in a, in a monastery or a convent or other kind of religious community in which they uh, give great attention to prayer and worship of God. I use a, a book that's very similar to what many, many monks use uh, to guide their prayer life. And as part of that devotion is a reading of the Psalms. And uh, many orders will use, that will go through the whole book of Psalms every week, or sometimes every few weeks. And the, the prayers uh, included in the Psalms, which are often sung, uh, shape one's, one's emotions, one's soul, to be uh, oriented musically uh, towards worship and towards uh, seeking of the Lord. So the Psalms are, are used, of course, either for reading or, or singing in worship, but they have a wide application to the variety of Christian devotional activities. The second major book in the section of wisdom in the Bible is called Proverbs. Now, Psalms were largely written by King David and were uh, poetry that's meant to be sung. Proverbs are a collection of wisdom sayings. They're little aphorism or, or nuggets of insight that help guide one's life practically. You know, just good little, good little sayings to live by. Interestingly enough, this book of Proverbs was written by King David's son, Solomon. Uh, Solomon was known to be one of the wisest people who ever lived, a man of deep, deep understanding and of insight. And this book of Proverbs is attributed to him. And many of these, these Proverbs are still memorized and treasured by Christians today to deepen their own wisdom. Some of the uh, some of the famous proverbs 
which you may know already are, say, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own knowledge. In your your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Another one is uh, 2, 9, or 9, 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. There's uh, a few that are a little bit more practical in nature, such as uh, Proverbs 15.1. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Another is more uh, theological. Uh, commit your way to the Lord, and your plans will be established. One last one that I'm going to share with you is 17.22. A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a downcast spirit dries up the bones. you got to get the sense of these proverbs. They're the little sayings that are easily memorizable and which often have a little moral to them or a little bit of theological insight into our relationship with God. These proverbs you'll not see as much in worship service or in devotional life. They don't play a central role as the Psalms do. But nonetheless, you'll see them often on uh, bumper stickers or pieces of art or memes uh, or, you know, in people's email signatures. These are often really easy, short, pithy sayings that, uh, that just deepen one's own understanding and draws one closer to God. This is the book of Proverbs and some of the homework from this lesson we'll be uh, focusing on the sayings that are in. At this point in the course, you've gotten to know a lot of the stories of the major characters in the Bible, people like King David, uh, Moses, and the people as they were enslaved in Egypt. You got to know such people as Adam and Eve, and uh, Noah, and the other patriarchs. And most of our learning to this point in the in the Old Testament has focused on these stories of these really important people. This new wisdom section is a different type of writing, but nonetheless effective and important in developing faith. The, the Psalms are a way of connecting our souls musically uh, with one another in worship and to God, and the Proverbs are a way of uh, refining one's knowledge, understanding, and insight. It's little gems you can carry with you through the day. This is a different mode of writing. And if you remember back to our introductory lesson on the Bible, the scriptures are composed of different styles, different types, that are meant to be read and interacted with differently. In this case, they're meant to be interacted with with music, with uh, memorization and on art. And next week, we turn our attention to a third mode which is called prophecy. Now, prophecy does include history and stories and events. It also includes a fair bit of music and poetry. It includes uh, na analogy and metaphor, but it also includes a, an additional element, which is a, basically a, a direct exhortation from God. So, blessings on your studies this week as you acquaint yourselves with wisdom literature and we look forward to joining you again next week as we explore this new and last genre of the Old Testament, the Prophets. <laughs>